Hello everyone and welcome to a lab activity today. As we continue to understand more about why our Earth way looks the way that it does, we are going to talk about glaciers and constructive and destructive mechanisms. So you need this handout, the one that is the glacier lab activity, so make sure that you have taken that from Schoology and either printed it or put it in Notability. You should have read the introduction and you should have watched the pre-lab video and done the pre-lab questions so that now you are ready to do the actual lab procedure. So for supplies, what I have here is we have a cook, uh, like a lunch tray that's got flour on it. That's our land form. We, I sprayed it with cooking spray first just to keep the flour from just sticking. And then I've made a couple glaciers that are inside these cups so we'll get ready for those in just a little bit um let's see so that's all of our supplies so you can follow along on here or you can just watch the video but what i'm going to show you is the constructive and deconstructive idea well it's both of those mechanisms are things that form the land we're focusing just on glaciers so we're focusing on constructive mechanisms of glaciation the movement of glaciers and what happens to the landform when you do that. Okay, so first I got to get my glaciers going. So here is my glacier. So it's a large mass of ice. This would have formed in real life because snow would have built up and the weight of that snow would eventually have smashed down and then eventually the weight would smash all the particles and crystals together to form ice instead of snow. And then we've got some um, dirt sediment that'll be on the bottom. So I'm going to place that glacier there. And then I've got my other glacier and I'm going to put that glacier here. So the idea would be is that because there is not perfect flatness in our landforms, that eventually because of gravity and just the weight of the glaciers themselves, these landforms would start to move. So I'm going to just kind of gradually move them. So maybe this one is going kind of this direction. And then maybe this is going kind of this direction. And you can see what's happening to our landforms as I move that glacier. So kind of notice what's going on. So kind of give you a visual of what's happening. So as the glaciers start to move, notice what is happening to the land around it. And this would just maybe keep moving and maybe this would go like this. And then maybe eventually they bump into each other. That could happen. And then this keeps moving and then eventually this moves. And I'm just being having fun with glaciers so i'm just kind of making them move in different ways as the earth tilts and as the um sun changes its strength and different seasons and different parts of the world we would get different kinds of motions all right so this is where i'm gonna leave them sit and then we would imagine that at some point there would, might be some more motion that happened but this is going to be where my glaciers stop so let's take a look at what this looks like. All right. So you see areas that have been pushed forward. You have see areas that have been cleared. And then those glaciers would either keep moving or they would stop here because maybe there's so much built up in front of the glacier, it just can't move anymore. So the idea here is that after a while, these glaciers would just melt here. So this is definitely what happened in Minnesota, is that glaciers moved, and then you can kind of see what's going on here. We have this could maybe turn into a river, and this could maybe turn into a lake. As this glacier eventually melts, though that water would turn and fill the empty space, so this would be an explanation of different rivers and lakes, different big hills or sides of lakes. So I have one that I did a little while ago. And so you can see that this glacier totally melted and then it left either, this could be like the bottom of a river or the bottom of a lake or a big hill that is kind of built up. And then maybe you can also tell that the water kind of ran down and it pooled here and then actually went all the way over here too. So it's kind of like it made a river and this would be more like a lake and built up different sides and hills and um, different parts of features of lakes that we would see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this here so that you can see the full 
landform. And then I want you to sketch this. So I want you to get an idea of what this would look like. So labeling different parts and then kind of drawing different pieces, different features. Maybe I'll kind of move it around so you can see it from different angles. So draw what you see to represent how the landform changes as the glaciers would move and then eventually they stop. But you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. All right. Now, the other thing I want to point out about this glacier, so I'm going to spin this. So glaciers generally, of course, don't move as fast as I was showing. So this amount of space is about 39 centimeters. It would have taken this glacier to move from here to here on average 37 hours. So that, of course, depends on the actual terrain and the temperature and the size of the glacier. But in general, 39 centimeters would have taken about 37 hours. Just to give you sort of some connections of how fast these glaciers are moving and how fast this is actually happening. But of course, you have to have glaciers present for this to happen. And here in Minnesota, we don't have any glaciers anymore because the temperature is too high. It was about you know, 12 to 14,000 years ago when we stopped having glaciers. And so all of our Minnesota was formed like this because of the glaciers that were here thousands of years ago. So that is the connection between how landforms look and glaciation, the constructive mechanism of glaciation. And so now you've got a couple conclusion questions to answer, and then you've got your CER conclusion. So the essential question was, how do glaciers affect the surface of the Earth? So first, your claim, answer that question. Use some observations of things that you saw from the lab. And then the reasoning could involve things from the introduction, from the pre-lab video, from things we've talked about here to help explain what is going on, what's the reasoning that this is happening. All right, thanks for being my lab partner and helping me explore, explore glaciers. We'll see you next time.